What's cracking everybody? Today we're gonna to talk about how barista competitions work. We just got back from the annual Specialty Coffee Association Expo. They have a trade show and they host all the competitions there. They've got the Cup Tasters competition, the Brewers Cup, and the biggest one and the most popular one is the United States Barista Competition. I used to compete in these all the time and it was kind of the climax of my year as a barista. I don't do it anymore, but it's still fun to go and watch. And there's a couple people that really stand out above the rest. And one of those this year was T. Ben Fisher. I met T. Ben in Costa Rica a few months before the competition. Just through through happenstance we got to hang out had a cool little evening together and talk and I listened to some of his philosophies on competition competition weekend he ended up in the final so that's the top six we'll talk more about that later we'll talk about the format don't get ahead of yourself Holly who's a good friend of mine and also helped coach him asked me if I wanted to come by practice early in the morning the day of the finals they have an hour-long practice session where they can taste the coffee dial in, do a bunch of things practice time is really really sensitive so I try to be a fly on the wall not get in the way and just kind of show support but not be annoying. Let's get into the format of the competition. For the competition, you've got 15 minutes to serve 12 drinks. So you serve four espressos, four of a milk course, which used to be a cappuccino course, but now baristas have a little bit more freedom to do their own ratio of milk, and four of a signature beverage, which is a beverage that the barista creates themselves. Now the competition is judged by three groups of judges. You have your sensory judges. Those are the judges that are actually tasting the drinks that you're serving. When you're doing your presentation, the sensory judges are the ones that you're addressing. They're sitting at a table, they've got clipboards, they're writing stuff down, you get to talk to them, tell them what you're all about. They're judging you on everything from taste, temperature of the beverages, texture of the beverages, it's the whole kit. The second group of judges are the technical judges. The technical judges are judging you on technical things. How clean you're keeping your station, are you spilling coffee when you're dosing and redistributing, how is your workflow, are you tamping accurately, all of those things. And they're really, really, really close to you. And it's a little nerve wracking to have someone that that you don't know stand inches away from you intensely watching what you're doing. Now they're instructed to not be in the way so they have to move when you move and kind of give you space to do what you need but it's still pretty intense to have that close proximity. The third group of judges or judge that's in on this is the head judge. The head judge tastes all the drinks, kind of hovers around, just double checks everything. The head judge's score isn't counted in the final score but the head judge does lead the deliberation backstage. So the scores that people give on stage aren't always the scores that stay. They'll talk through scores if there's a discrepancy in some scores, if one judge is scoring a lot lower than the other judges. It's the head judge's job to kind of calibrate the judges and figure out why that discrepancy existed. Now each judge has their own score sheet and the score sheets have kind of two different categories. There's zero to six scale and then there's things that are yes or no. Yes or no's are black and white. Either you did it or you didn't. The zero to six scale is used in things that aren't black and white. Taste balance, for example, tactile. And then there are some categories that are multipliers. So you'll have zero to six, and then they have a multiplier in front of them, which means they're worth even more. Confused yet? Totally. I'll put links to the score sheets down below. Now, for all you baristas out there who've never been to one of these or seen one of these things, serving 12 drinks in 15 minutes doesn't seem like that much of a challenge, but it's a little bit trickier than that. The experience that you provide is really important, and when you show up to the competition stage, you basically have nothing provided for you. They have an espresso machine for you and a grinder, but everything else you bring. So you wheel out a cart that's got everything on it. Espresso cups, cappuccino cups, water glasses, water for the judges, tablecloth, place setting anything that you might use during your presentation you have to get that set up in your 15 minutes prep time which happens before the competition attention to detail really matters here it's not uncommon to see people setting up with gloves on so they don't get smudges on the glassware everything's polished it's a real fine dining kind of experience nothing is haphazard stuff is dialed aside from the attention to detail you need in your setup more so than just serving the drinks and getting them out there you need to really understand what coffee you're using understand the flavor of that coffee so you can't just serve espresso. You need to describe the flavor of that espresso to the judges. And even if the coffee is good, but the flavor descriptions don't match the descriptions that you give, that's a problem. People go to great lengths to make sure that the judges taste the best version of their espresso. For example, T-Ben pulled his espresso, gave it to the judges, asked them to not drink the espresso yet, to only evaluate the crema, let the espresso sit for two minutes, then stir the espresso with his little cat spoons, place the 
the dirty spoons into these little glass tubes so that they didn't get any mess all over the service area and then evaluate the espresso. Is it over the top? Yeah, it's absolutely over the top. But if you want the judges to have the best experience and you want them to taste the coffee the way you taste it and have it match those flavor descriptors, which is gonna result in more points, you gotta take care with things like that. In addition to serving the espresso, getting the flavor calls right, there's the presentation aspect of the whole situation. The judges wanna see coffee knowledge and they wanna see it woven into the story that you're telling. So you wanna know where your coffee's grown, how it's picked, how it's processed, what are the details, but more than just reading through the details like it's some stat sheet or something, they wanna know how those things affect the flavors that they will be tasting. And that feeds into a whole different part of the challenge is taking that information and weaving it into whatever story you're trying to tell. Even if you do know all that info and how it affects taste, your performance would fall really flat if you went up on stage, served some espresso, told people about coffee processing, and then said goodbye and had no bigger message Message to it. So the best presentations have some driving statement, some big mission statement. It's like a thesis paper. There's this huge idea you want to see happen. Maybe it's a change in the specialty coffee industry. Maybe it's a whole new idea that's never been explored in coffee. And you're using your presentation as a soapbox to get your idea out there. And being able to weave that in with the flavors and weave that in with the coffee knowledge. People that can do that have epic presentations and T-Ben did an amazing job of this. Now, although the espresso course has weighted the most heavily on the score sheet. Visually and creatively, the signature drink is kind of like a climax to the whole performance. For the signature drink, baristas are allowed to create their own beverage using whatever they want, except it can't have alcohol in it. Even though they're given a lot of freedom, the best signature drinks aren't random. They're usually minimalistic ingredients, really subtle, and you don't really want to taste the flavors that you're putting into the drink per se, but you want what you're adding to the drink to really open up that coffee, accentuate the coffee, and make the coffee come alive. You want it to have a real synergy with the coffee. t Ben's signature drink only had a few ingredients in it. You've got a little bit of lime juice, you've got a little bit of simple syrup, and then you've got a little bit of egg white just to give it that texture much like they do in cocktails. Those ingredients are shaken with ice and chilled espresso, poured into these glasses here, and then over that he layers this aromatic strawberry fog. So you can see you got the dry, the strawberries. It's really amazing looking. You can see the strawberries tumbling. And after it goes for about 30 seconds or a minute, you really start to smell that strawberry smell coming off. It's not overpowering or overwhelming. It's just enough to let you know that it's there. And the effect that that has on the presentation of the drink and of the presentation just at the table for the judges is so cool. Barista competitions can be really boring. So anything that you can do to amp it up while maintaining class and taste is really, really huge. Sure, it'd be easy to take some dry ice and make it steam and smoke and have it be completely out of context. But for the way the flavors came together for a signature beverage, it was perfect. This drink was really, really, really good. I'm so glad that I got to try it during practice time. And again, when you drink it, you don't taste any of those ingredients individually. You taste a different version of the coffee. It's like those ingredients kind of pull some things out of the coffee that were just kind of subtle and in the background, accentuate different different aspects of the coffee, you just get a different highlighted version of his espresso. And that's one of the biggest challenges with the signature beverage, coming up with something that tastes delicious, that's simple and accentuates the coffee, but is still innovative enough to not fall flat and be super boring. It's, it's, it's pretty hard. It's hard. It's real. Shit is real. For the competitor, competition weekend is a really, really gnarly weekend. I'd say for about every 15 minutes that you make coffee, you're doing probably four or five hours work to get ready for that. Practicing, dialing in. Every time you practice, you have to do dishes. You have to repolish everything. You have to keep track of what coffees you have. A lot of times people bring different coffees. Sometimes people will bring the same coffee roasted at different days. Sometimes people will bring coffee that were roasted on the same day. It's the same coffee, but they're opening the bag to let it off gas at different rates and testing those and seeing which one you're gonna use and just keeping track of all that stuff. That's not including the amount of work that it took you to get here and not including the nights where you stay in your hotel room practicing your run-throughs in the mirror and go to bed early while everyone else is out there partying. So if you wanna do the weekend right, it's really important to have a super good team with you. If you have coaches, that's awesome. They're super helpful. But aside from coaches, you really need someone who's like a homie, someone who can take care of those random little things that come up for you. 
you always end up needing all kinds of weird stuff or even just feeding you. You're in the convention center. If there is food there, it's pretty horrible. It's so easy to just kind of wander around all day doing what you need to do and forget that you haven't eaten and you're just like, I'm gonna pass out, what's the deal? Get this guy a burrito. So yeah, barista competitions, maybe the most fun you'll ever have, maybe the most stressed you'll ever be, kind of nerdy if you've ever seen that movie Best in Show, it's like that, but for coffee. If you work for a shop and are interested in barista competitions or if you own a shop and have employees that are interested, it's a really cool way to get your staff psyched about coffee. You don't even have to compete, you can volunteer, you can bus, you can sign up to judge, they'll put you through a little sensory class. It's like a really cool way to do some palatal development, drive engagement, and no matter what capacity you participate in, everybody comes back more hyped. So if you're looking into it, I, you know, look, go there. Super big shout out to T-Ben for letting me hang out, letting me film this, letting me document the practice session. I know it's kind of obnoxious to have people there sometimes, so I really appreciate being able to taste the coffee and being able to be at the table. It really made my weekend awesome. It was my favorite morning of the whole weekend. If anyone's wondering, T-Ben got second place in the nation. Congratulations to you, my man. Second place is super, super awesome. And I know second place is like this really weird thing because it's so close to first. Trust me, I know exactly how you feel because I've been there. But second place is no joke. You should be super proud. And you really got me charged up. The way you talk about coffee, the story, your energy on stage, not to mention, I don't know what else to call it other than swag. It was really refreshing. And you got me super hyped on breeze competitions in a way that I really haven't been for a while. So thank you so much for that it's fucking, it's fucking phenomenal feeling it that's barista competition y'all stay dialed and i will catch you on the flip side peace